Oscar Bevis for IFL TV in association with MTK Global here at the Matrim Elite Boxing Gym with an elite fighter. Do you know how many, I reckon you must have the record for the most, the most pandemic appearances on IFL TV. It feels like I see your face on our channel every other week on Zoom. Yeah, quite often. Um, I always get some uh, randomers sometimes, but we always get IFL boys uh, on, the Zoom, on the Zoom. So um, yeah, it's, it's something different. Um, I've never done them before and uh, now I'm doing them regular. It's Andy, that's why it's, it's the Scottish connection. Scottish Andy's connection. backing you all the way, yeah. <laughs> um, you've spoken to Andy about your fight. We know you're fighting Anthony Fox. Obviously, preparation now going on and with you fighting on Match and Fight Camp. Uh, Felix topping one of them, Ted topping yeah. the other, and John looking like we'll land the biggest fight in boxing. How good is the buzz in the gym at the moment? The, the gym's uh, buzzing at the moment. They're all fiving on each other. Um, we're all pushing each other on the run, sparring, bag work. Um, Obviously, I'm about to train with Ted now. We're doing steps this morning. We push each other on the steps this morning. And um, we're just hearing the news. John might be getting the Canelo fight. Um, so the gym is buzzing for John. And uh, I wish I was in John's shoes just now. But um, I wish him all the best. And um, he actually deserves it. I actually thought he beat Callum Smith. And um, he, he should be world champion just now. So, um, yeah. I'm just putting on my John. John might the world champion. And Ken he's fighting Canelo next. All in good time. And you'll be there all in good time. Right. Um I know you spoke about Anthony Fox as well, but I just said to you, I saw him beat Dwayne Sinclair, and he's one of them people who's got like that deceiving record, isn't he? Yeah. Um, normally, when you'd fight someone with a record like that, you wouldn't perhaps train for them. You'd no. just train and sort of work on your own things, but is it someone that you've had to train specifically for? Yeah, the, the mistake everyone else has made by him is they just put him as a journeyman, um, thinking, oh, he's, he's just a, a pushover. Um, I, as you know, you can ask Tony yourself, I haven't put my body through hell. I've got to put on a very good performance here. I just, it just can't be... The, um, a, a close fight and I win by points and it was a close fight no I'm going to put a statement up there and that's with stopping Anthony Fox I know I say it in every single fight but with his style if he comes forward as he's been fighting he will get himself knocked out very quickly um, but then again we have seen him box a few times and he is a bit better on the back foot but um, hopefully he comes forward and comes for a fight and um, it'll be another night for John Doherty is it because there's be so many eyes on fight camp as well like Ted said to me he's like a guinea pig he's on fight camp one um you're not on fight. What fight camp are you on again? I don't even remember. You're on third fight camp. So you're on the same fight camp as, as Felix. Yeah. Um, are you going to have to sort of ask Ted and say what it's about a little bit? Because when you saw the BT footage, I don't know if you watch yeah. it, but you can hear everything the corner's saying and they can hear what the other corner's saying as well. So it's a strange situation. How do you think you're going to fare in the fact that you'll be able to hear every word Tony said? I, I think um, our fight camp's going to be completely different to um, Frank Warren's one. Um, to be truthful, I was quite disappointed in that fight. His one's too fair. I thought it was going to be much better, but um, it is what it is. Um, we've got Ted going first, so I'll get to ask him what, what, what he felt like, what was in there. But um, listen, I, I boxed all over the country as an amateur, so we had, I had this all the time. Like um, Felix as well, uh, he boxed all over the country. You know I mean, um, we, we, we've had this experience before with no one in there. We're going to see the corners shouting, and uh, you can hear me punch foot and off. And, do you know what I mean? I, I'm looking forward to it. I am. I'm, the sky, I'm live on Sky, so what else more can I ask for? Do you know what I mean? Um, I'm going to put performance on and um, shine on the night. I do sort of wonder if this is something that might have to become common. I mean, have you spoken about past this, what could happen? Because we don't know if there's going to be fans in arenas this year, if there's even going to be arenas, if Eddie's going to continue with fight camp, we don't know. Has there been any word on what could potentially happen afterwards? Well, I've, um, uh, me and Tony spoke, and um, obviously Tony spoke to a bit where Eddie heard that. Um, Manix, after this here, if it go, all goes well, listen, we don't know what's going to happen on the night, but all's going well. What, what I've told my team, um, we're looking to get an animator for the British title. Um, a 10 rounder next and a final eliminator just try and get a title next but um, eliminate a next for the British title hopefully I can get that so I mean the back end of this year and next year essentially the biggest years in your career which they would be because you've gone from sort of having those early learning fights right. to that these next two years just massive for you aren't they? yeah definitely I'm, uh, I'm actually going to move more closer to Brentwood and um, I'm, I'm, I'm putting everything into this listen I know if I slip up I'm finished Do you know I mean? that's what I've got in my head so I've got a kid to, there now and uh, I've got a wife there, do you know what I mean? I've got a family to, uh, to put food on the table, to, do you know what I mean? So um, I've just got to keep doing what I'm doing, listen to Tony and um, I, I, I'll, I'll be ready. Um, you'll see this uh, fight here, I've pushed my body to limits, I've uh, done extra running. Uh, every run we've done, I've beat my times, so I've done extra rounds and sparring. Just, just, I'm just a different animal this camp and you're just going to see on fight camp. Yeah, I heard you saying you're moving closer to Brentwood. So when I put this out, if anyone's got a flat in Brentwood, they can yeah. rent the dock. They can let the dock have for free. Then uh, <laughs> just, yeah, just get in contact. Um, 
I want to talk about sparring. We might as well. Like I said, you've spoke a lot about this fight. Any names you've been sparring that you can tell us about? Sort of good round? I've just been sparring really um, just the boys in the gym. Obviously, we're still cautious of the COVID-19, do you know what I mean? So um, we're keeping as uh, low as people in, in the gym. I've been sparring like um, John Maida for this year. I, I just sparred um, uh, James Harlan, is it? From uh, MTK. Uh, he's with, no, I've yet to, yeah. I've sparred him uh, two or three times. Um, I sparred Craig Richardson. I sparred Jimmy, that boy in there, Jimmy now. Um, See, so yeah, I've had all good sparring. I'm, uh, I've been well. My last spar done eight rounds, four minutes. Do you know what I mean? So I'm a two fresh boy, so I'm, I'm fit just now. I'm ready to fight this weekend, and I'm just saying that if I had like a few days off, I'd be ready to fight this weekend. That's how fit I am just now, and I've still got another four weeks to go. Do you know what I mean? So um, uh, you're going to see me a more improved fighter in this fight camp. Um, you're going to see me a completely different fighter uh, on uh, the third fight camp. Right, moving away from you and back on to John. How does he beat Canelo? That's the big one, isn't it? Because you know, it's easy to say you can step up to world level. We saw John can mix it. We saw, you know, his close fight with Callum Smith. But Canelo's not world level. He's that elite world level. He's pound for pound one, pound for pound two. So how does John go in there and not just compete with Canelo? Because obviously you want to compete. You want to win as well. So how does he go in there and, and topple the Mexican? If I was John, I'd just go in there and try and just go in there and just don't give him no respect and just walk him down and just um, land. John's a big hitter. One, I've sparred him. I know and he's one big puncher. And um, it showed in the Callum Smith fight. Chances didn't really engage. And he was a bit more threatened with John's punches. I mean, um, John Major's got to go in there, give him no respect. And obviously, listen, he's a great. Yeah, Canelo's going to go down as one of the greats. I mean, um, so if I was John Major, I was going there, give him no respect. And um, maybe John could land one big punch and knock him out. You never know, because John Major's got that kind of power. Do you know what I mean? Um, but we'll have to see on the night and what kind of tactics Tony give him. Yeah, I mean, I've never seen John actually get bullied. And Ted said this as well. I've never, even when John's had defeats, I've never seen him get bullied. Uh, so he lands can the Canelo fight. You come through fight camp. If there's any golden boy lads at your weight, forget the British one, you'll be out there, uh, Vegas or wherever it is, in the new Raiders stadium, you'll be out there ready to fight one of their boys? Yeah, well, uh, I, was, I was thinking this last night, when I win this fight next, um, I want to, uh, if I can get my canal on the car and my right I'll uh, happily fight one of them boys over there in a 10 round, no problem at all, get a little title on the line and um, I'm in with the mix in there. See John knock Canelo out and then you do the business on the undercard. Maybe then I can fight John after it. <laughs> Happy days.